All right, it's Thursday. Thursday with Angie. Today we're going to taste three different wines from the Honey Badger Don't Give a Shit Come Home Vineyard, Family Vineyard. I must say, when I first saw this winery, uh, when it was first introduced to me, you kind of chuckle to look at the label. You're like, what kind of badasses put honey badgers on their label? So it turns out this is a family owned winery in the Sonoma region. And it's a three generation, I think, family who all went to University of Wisconsin, which apparently the Badgers are their school mascot. So I, I, I kind of really love the really bold move between the whole making supposedly a very, very high-end wine, but going in a more humorous direction of adding a really cool animal right on the label. And apparently when you go visit their wine, you will see a bunch of badger uh, stuff, decorations and stuffed badgers like everywhere in the winery. The winery itself is absolutely beautiful as well. But hey, none of that matter. Today we're going to just talk about the wine based on its taste. They have quite a, a range of different wines, a really modern winemaking estate, but the three wines I was able to sample today is all their estate bottling. So we have the Isthmus, their Nance Canyon Vineyard, and their Hamon Family Ranch. All of those are estate owned and they're all cat based wines. So let's go, go for it. So the Isthmus is a 2017 vintage. I believe this is more of their entry level wine. This wine is going for $90 a bottle, whereas these two are $160 a bottle. So Isthmus, apparently I have to ask what I, I have to look at what that word means, but um, turns out they tell you right on the back of their label. Isthmus involves connection. It's a narrow strip of land with water on each side connecting two larger land area. To us, it must, seems to be the ideal name for a state red wine blend that includes grapes from both our Hamon family ranch and the Nance Canyon Estate Vineyard. So I believe it's essentially a wine that they make combining the fruits from both vineyards is their younger vines and whatever that doesn't go into these estate bottles are going to the isthmus. And this one is larger in their production. When I say larger, it's still tiny. It's about 1,263 cases produced. I Coravin some earlier about 10 minutes ago. Let's see how it tastes like because there are so many new wineries just coming out um, and it's always interesting to see uh, how they do. Uh, by the way, both of these are going to be 100% Cabernet and this is a 71% Cab with 15% below, 12% Cab from, and 2% Petit Verdot. Let's give it a go. So on the nose, there's, it's, oh, just FYI, there's an unfair disadvantage I feel like for this bottle being the 2017. 2016 was a, that right lush, really easy drinking right off the bat bottle and the 2017 is a little more difficult. It takes a little more time in the bottle. It has a higher acidity. I think it's gonna age better in the long term, but in the short term, it usually don't grab consumers' attention as well as the 26 have. And yeah, on, this, on the nose, I'm feeling a lot of vibrancy, a lot of red fruit. Let me just kind of do the nose first because I believe in smelling all the wine first before you go into the palate. Yeah, huge difference as far as in um, kind of the intensity of the fruit and the characteristic of the fruit. In the 2017, just on the nose, it's much more red driven. It's a little sharper, tar more tart and a little more just vibrant if that makes sense and both of these are going to be a lot denser heavier more black food right off the bat more intensity more smoke more of that oaky flavor as well so very interesting but we're gonna give this guy an honest go so i'm getting red cherry cranberry raspberry again very red but don't don't let it fool you there's a lot of red herbs uh, there's a lot of herbs as well i'm getting that menthol nose eucalyptus classic uh, cabernet blend and also when you're smelling, check both nose. You might have one nose that's better than the other. It's always fun to check. The wine is definitely on the more sharper, higher acid, red driven style. It is full in the body. The alcohol is balanced. What surprised me is I feel like a lot of the newer winery like to go very heavy sometimes. I think the pendulum is swinging back now, but I think for the longest time you see a lot of new winery, especially the, the people who are charging $90 plus, they, used to ha they usually have a very heavy hand in their oak usage, but at least in the Isthmus, the oak is very well integrated. I'm not feeling that really uncomfortable, very unbalanced oaky notes to them. It's surprisingly refreshing. 
very red fruit driven. Good finish. I'm actually getting a medium plus finish. It's hard, I feel like, for a Sonoma winery placing it at $90 retail. It, it, it's, it's almost not quite heavy enough uh, for what I usually imagine of a Sonoma Valley Cab, but not super light either. But um, I would say, for me, I would probably age this wine just a couple more years and allow that acidity in the background to calm down a little bit. And I think the wine will overall become a lot more integrated and taste better. Next, we're gonna go with their Nuns Canyon Vineyard. This is their 2016 vintage, it's 100% Cabernet. It's definitely gonna drink a little bit different than the first one. They only had 229 cases produced. It's a much smaller production. And I think these two are going to be fun because they are literally two clock next to each other. But the winemaker and the grower, the, uh, the Hemon family, believe that there is a diff distinction in the taste. That's why they decide to bottle them separately. Let's see if I can find out what it is. I'm assuming the winemaking is very similar. Yep, both 26 months in 100% new French barrel. And they do split the wine between concrete tin and stainless steel tank for the fermentation. Yeah, the Hamon family ranch is definitely a, a slight, is definitely more showy, more expressive on the nose. You are getting a lot more of that oaky, spicy woodiness. I, I'm saying just on the nose alone, the Hamon family ranch, if you like that classic, oaky, big personality style Cabernet, that will be the one for you. Where in the Nuns Canyon vine, uh, Vineyard is the type that I typically actually like. It's a little more reserved up from and you're getting a little more minerality and getting that kind of clay, stony fla flavor to them. So I'm personally loving the Nuns Canyon better. Let's try out the nose. This one is huge. All right, wow. Ah, it's still in my mouth. Yep, it definitely make its presence known. Oh, I'm still tasting it. Good acidity, good, good, good acidity. It's not heavy, it's not overwhelming. Very pretty. It finished with kind of that dark chocolate mocha notes that I personally very enjoy. Ooh, I'm loving that slightly spicy chocolatey finish. Ooh, that smoky touch there at the end is quite satisfying. The wine is huge though. On the mouth, uh, right now for that 2016, is humongous. The tenon afterward is coming back to grab you. So if you're drinking this wine now, absolutely decant it for a couple hours first. Eat it with a big steak or something meaty because it's gonna need it. It's a very heavy hitter um, on the palate on its own. Now let's try the Hamon Family Ranch, see how it goes. On the nose, you're, def you're getting a lot more of that like licorice, that classic black fruit is very satisfying, that savory nose in the last one, the Hamon Family Ranch is very interesting. Whew. Wow, again, the finish on both of these wines are just humongous. It's lasting in my mouth for like at least a minute. It definitely needs at least a few more years in the cellar or very aggressive double decanting if you wanna drink these wines now. And 16 being one of a good vintage, in Napa and Sonoma, it could definitely age for a while. The difference between the Hamon family is you got a lot more like savory black food notes and a little more animal leathery notes there at the finish, whereas the Nuns Canyon, the finish a little spicier, it's a little more reserved and a little more mineral driven. Both of them are really nice, it just depends on what you want. If you're more of like classic, big cab guys like you want that oaky notes and that black food thing going with the Hamon family if you are going for the more reserved more mineral driven stylistically a little closer to the old world style i'll go with the nuns canyon mm. final note i still like the nuns canyon the best because i think it has the best balance between that fruit earth minerality red fruit and black fruit for a hundred and $60 a bottle. It is in line with the quality that's in the bottle for sure. For now, I think the Isthmus needs a little more time to see if it's gonna integrate better because right now it being the 17, the slightly more difficult vintage and it just, it's just not showing the depths and the weights and the food characteristic I'm looking for in a Cabernet blend from Sonoma Valley. But hey, at the end of the day, I'm loving what they're doing there. 
the entire operation is very impressive if you've seen the photos and the videos it's definitely one of the wineries i will consider checking out and if you are looking for very special meaning first year wines or things with badger on them like a honey badger don't give a shit type of wine but still delicious and not just like a joke i would definitely go for one of their um, single vineyard estate wine here uh, personally Nuns, Vine Nuns Canyon Vineyard will be my choice but I think both of them will work really great I hope you find this video helpful if you do please subscribe to my mailing list at ngsound.com so you'll get updates on all the great wine videos just like this one thank you so much for watching until next time